So let's continue with another example. Uh, so in this example, uh, we have a random sample of size n. Okay, uh, from the PDF given as 2 theta x e to the minus theta x squared, where x is positive and theta is positive parameter space. And here, the null hypothesis is given as theta greater than or equal to theta 0 versus theta less than theta 0. So these are given to us. <coughs> So find the uniformly most powerful test of size alpha. Uh, it's not a question mark, but let's say this is A, and let's try to find also the power function as the second part of the question. Okay, so the first step is what? First step is finding the likelihood ratio. At this step, we are forgetting about the hypothesis, okay? And then... We need to focus on the simple likelihood ratio under the condition that theta 0 greater than theta 1. Okay, so let's find L, simple likelihood ratio, under this condition. Okay, so let's, let's write the PD, um, the, not PDF, the likelihood function um, uh, for theta 0. So 2n theta 0 to the n multiplication of xi terms e to the minus theta summation xi squared and do the same thing for the theta 1 um, sorry this should be n not 2 let me erase that okay this should be n sorry okay again the multiplication of xi from 1 to n e to the minus theta 1 summation xi squared. Okay, so these terms cancels out, these terms cancels out. So what we have here is theta 0, theta 1 to the n e to the minus summation xi squared i from 1 to n theta 0 minus theta 1. Okay, so again here, when we look at this ratio, only statistic that we have is summation xi squared, right? And now we have to decide um, for which uh, value, uh, values of L, uh, values of summation xi squared, L is an increasing function. So when we consider that, so L depends on sample random variables, sample values x1 to xn only through summation xi squared i from 1 to n and l is a so at this point we have to focus on the case that theta 0 greater than theta 1 okay so we have this quantity, so this is positive basically, because when theta 0 greater than theta 1 is positive, and also this part is positive, so basically we can say that it is a non-decreasing function of summation xi squared for theta 0 greater than theta 1. So this means that our monotone likelihood ratio, ratio statistic oops, sorry, equals to summation xi squared. So this is a statistic, so I'm writing it in a, the capital letters. Okay, so we found our statistic, monotone likelihood ratio statistic is this one. And so then we can write our uniformly most powerful test as reject H0 if summation xi squared i from 1 to n. So at this point, we have to look at the direction of the alternative hypothesis. So let's look at the direction here. So here, if you see, uh, 
It is theta less than theta zero. So do the same direction. So write Montonac ratio statistic less than or equal to C. Okay. So now our job is finding C. Okay. Then uh, again. Uh, what we are using, we are using alpha, so we know the value of alpha, we assume that it is like 5% at the beginning of the test, this is pretty fine. So what is the probability of reject H0? What is our reject H0 condition? Summation xi square is a random variable right now in the probability less than or equal to c and condition that theta equals to theta 0. Okay, so now to be able to find the value of c, First of all, we have to define the PDF of summation xi square. After finding the PDF of summation xi square, we can find the value of c. Okay, so here the easiest way is considering it small transformation. So first start with the transformation of, let's use a different um, thing here, different letters, let's say z equals some um, just x squared okay then our z um, will be um, or our x will be square root of y because x is positive so we, co we don't consider negative uh, root okay then the uh, jacobian in absolute value will be in absolute value dx over dz which is 1 over 2 times square root of z. Okay, so it's positive. And then when we consider the distribution of z, then, so what was the PDF? We have 2 times theta. So what is our x now? It is, um, sorry, uh, okay, um, it is just square root of z, right? And we have e to the minus theta z times the Jacobian 1 over 2 square root of z. Okay, then we can write this as theta e to the minus theta z. When you consider the transformation of the range, so x greater than 0, so z should be greater than 0 also. And and I know you know this PDF very well, right? I'm hearing that you're saying exponential, exponential. Okay, so yeah, yeah, there is a distributed ex exponential with 1 over theta parameter. So this means that summation xi squared, i from 1 to n, now distributed as gamma with n and 1 over theta. Okay, again we will use chi-square, we will turn this to a chi-square random variable, so I forgot the square here. Okay, so, so go back to alpha, so probable to that, the summation xi-square, now I know that it is gamma distributed, theta equal theta zero. Okay, and then uh, by multiplying this um, summation xi-square, sorry, uh, multiplying the summation xi square by 2 and theta. So I will make this summation xi square, but my theta is theta 0. I will turn this to a chi square and the variable, right? 2 theta 0 c, given theta equal theta 0. So now I know that this is a chi-square distributed random variable with 2 n degrees of freedom. So alpha equals probable to that chi-square distributed random variable less than or equal to 2 theta 0 c. Now, okay, so in the chi-square table, let's draw the PDF of the chi-square 2 n. And I know that the chi-square value less than or equal to some uh, quantity 2 theta 0 c is the probability of this event is alpha. Alpha is very small. So this means that I'm using cumulative probability. So this region is my alpha. Since I know that it's very small, I'm writing lower tail. And I know that this point is 2 c theta 0. Okay, so this should equal to, in terms of chi-square notation, chi-square 2n 
I use one minus alpha because I am using upper tail pro voltage to define uh, the value of this point. Then this means that C should be chi squared 2n 1 minus alpha over uh, 2 theta 0. Then now I can define my U M P T of size alpha as reject a zero if summation x i square now I'm writing lowercase letters less than or equal to c. What is c? I found it as chi square two and 1 minus alpha divided by 2 theta 0. So now this is my test. Okay, so I'm not using C anymore. Okay, so I already find the value of C. So let's say in part B, we want to find the power of the test. Okay, so find the power function. Okay. Okay, so this is a power function, uh, the value of theta could be in the alternative or in the uh, null, but usually we are considering power function uh, for the value of theta under the alternative one, and under that case actually we want to have a bigger numbers, and bigger the, t the, bigger the power, uh, better the test, you know. Uh, so we use pi theta notation to represent our power function. So this is what? This is probability that my monotone like ratio statistic less than or equal to my C, which I found it as this one, 2 theta 0, given any theta. Right now, my theta, any numbers, any value of theta. If it could be theta zero. If it is theta zero, basically we will get alpha. But if it is different than uh, theta zero, we will get different scores. And especially when we use scores under the alternative hypothesis, we want to see um, bigger values for the power function. Okay, again, let's convert um, convert our random variable. I forgot the square again. Um, to a chi square random variable. So probability that now two theta, right now my theta is given in the condition like that summation x i squared i have from 1, 2 and and I have 2 theta chi squared 2 and 1 minus alpha over 2 theta 0 given theta ok, now I have this chi squared with 2 and degrees of freedom and I have theta over theta 0 chi squared 2n 1 minus alpha. Okay, so this will be our power function. If my if my theta is theta zero, so I will definitely get alpha as the power function, and for other values I will get get different values um, calculated from the uh, chi square table. Okay, I hope uh, you understand the mechanism that we are using. Okay, so now the different subject. Uh, not different subject, actually different um, thinking to find the uniform most powerful test. Another example, so where, basically where the range of the random variable depends on a parameter. Uh, so you have to use um, the following approach that we will discuss. Okay, so let's say we have a uniform uh, distributed random variable on the range 0 and theta. You will guess that our test statistic will depend on the order statistic, but right now we let's focus on just we have a random variable, just one random variable, not a random sample case. Okay. So here you have to uh, remember um, the PDF form. Don't forget to write this in in this concept. It's very important actually. So usually what we are writing in, as a PDF of uniform, you know, one over theta, where x is between uh, zero and theta. You we can put an equal to sign. It doesn't matter, you know, uh, and zero otherwise. Okay. So this zero otherwise part will be important to be able to solve or to be able to find the monotone like the ratio so to stick here. Okay. So. Uh, here, this means that when x is negative, uh, 
we will have zero in the P as a PDF, and when x is greater than theta, we will have uh, also zero value for the uh, PDF value. So please remember that. And when um, let's assume that we have just sample of size one, so x is a single observation. Okay, and let's say we want to test that our um, theta equals 3 versus alternative theta greater than 3. Okay, okay so let's uh, derive the uniform, the most powerful test of size alpha for this example. Okay, so we have uniform case. Okay, so we have to consider a simple likelihood ratio, right? <coughs> okay, so under this condition, again, we are not looking at the direction of the uh, alternative hypothesis. So again, we are finding simple likelihood ratio without considering our given hypothesis. Okay, so since we have a single observation, so likelihood function will be exactly equal to the PDF, right? Okay, so now at this point we have to be careful. Uh, and we have to show that uh, for some values of theta, this, value, this PDF will get value zero, and for other cases, it will get different procedures. So let's consider um, the PDF. Okay, let's say this is our PDF for any theta, and let's say uh, we have um, x values, and this starting from zero, and let's say, so under the condition that theta zero greater than theta one, let's write theta one here and theta zero here, okay? So, you know, if, if uniform PDF is just a straight line in the same, uh, some region. Okay, so let's consider um, the numerator part first. Okay, so on the numerator part, we assume that our PDF for f of x is ranging from 0 to theta, right? So 0 to theta, it will take value like that, okay? Okay, um, Okay. so it will take these values, and then other than that, it will take value 0, okay? So in this case, it takes value 1 over theta. Okay, theta zero, let's say. Okay, so let's focus on the other part, the denominator part. Okay, so in the denominator part, we are saying that uh, our uh, PDF is ranging from zero to theta one, right? Let's say somewhere here. Actually, one over theta one should be higher, so it should be somewhere here. Okay. Um, but other than that, it will take value zero. Okay, here it will take value 0, and it will take value 0, and it will take value 1 over theta 1 here. Okay, 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 so uh, let's turn to our ratio here. Then, as you can see, um, for different values of theta, we have different structures. So the common uh, areas that the PDF takes values are these two cases, where x is between 0 and theta 1, okay? So then, let's write it, okay? So it will take value for theta 0, it will take value 1 over theta 0, over 1 over theta 1, for the case that x is between 0 and theta 1. Okay, but when x is between theta 1 and theta 0, okay, so here numerators will get some value right here, 1 over theta 0, over, but denominators, it's the red one, it, will, it gets value 0 here. So some number over uh, 0 gives us infinity. Okay? So, so only statistic that we use here is x, right? 
So here we can say that L depends on X, only sample value, only through X. It's kind of weird. Um, and and um, L is a non-decreasing function of x for theta 0 greater than theta 1. Because when you look at the likelihood, simple likelihood ratio, it gets value, some value, theta 1 over theta 0. Right here we have theta 1 over theta 0, uh, which is between 0 and 1. And, and it jumps to the infinity. So it's an increasing function or non-decreasing function. Okay, so it says that function under these conditions from 0 to 1, it will take get value theta 1 over theta 0. And then for the region theta, when x is between theta 1 and theta 0, it jumps to infinity. So it's a non-decreasing function of um, L. So we can say that our monotone likelihood ratio statistic is x. So here, uh, why we are doing it actually, so we have only one single random variable to be able to see that our monotone likelihood ratio statistic is x or minus x. If it is non-increasing function or decreasing function, we have to write monotone likelihood ratio statistic as minus x. But here we show that it is non-decreasing non or increasing function of x, so our monotone likelihood ratio statistic is just x. So after deciding that, our uniformly most powerful test will be reject a0 if x. So at this point, we have to um, we have to decide, we have to look at the um, range of or not range, actually yeah, the direction of the alternative hypothesis. So it is greater than, so we have to write greater than or equal to c. Okay, so now we have to find the value of c to define our uniform most powerful test totally. Okay, so again we are using alpha to find the value of c, so probability that reject a0, what is our reject a0 condition, x greater than or equal to c, under the condition that theta equals to 3, right? We gave it in the question, so it is here. Okay, so uh, this is a uniform distribution. We have just one observation, so we already know the PDF, right? So then just write from C to what is our upper bound theta. Our theta is given as 3 here. So 1 over, now our theta is again 3 dx. Okay, so 3 minus C over 3 equals to alpha. Okay. So our C should be 3 minus 3 alpha, or 3 times 1 minus alpha. If um, theta is different than 3, so we can just write t, uh, instead of 3, t, theta actually. Um, so the, for this case, uh, our C is like that, then this means that our uniformly most powerful test of size alpha is reject a0 if x is greater than or equal to 3 times 1 minus alpha. Okay? So only um, only knowing the value of alpha will be enough here to so just replace it and then when you take a sample, if this condition satisfies, reject the null hypothesis, otherwise do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so for example, when alpha equals 0 0.05, C will be 2.85, okay? And then, for this case, we can define a power function, or the probability of type 2 error, let's say. So, if we want to find the type 2 error probability for the case that um, theta equals 3.1, let's say. So 1 minus the power function, theta equals 3.1. So probability that 1 minus probability 
x greater than the c value is 2.85 given that theta equals 3.1 okay and um, so do the integration from 2.85 to 3.1 over r through theta is 3.1 now and it is um, okay 0 0.08 Okay, so this is the probability of type 2 error. Okay, so let's consider the case that n is different than 1 case. Okay, for the same um, problem. Okay, so let's say n is different than 1. Okay, and we have a random sample of size n, let's say. So we are using the same procedure, but now the simple likelihood ratio is uh, in terms of ratio, uh, in, in terms of the likelihood function, sorry. Uh, so L theta 0 greater than theta 1, L theta 0 over L theta 1. Okay, so at this point we have to uh, stop and then think about the same thing actually. Okay. Okay, so the previous case still uh, the same actually so in the, the case that for each xi value in this region case we have 1 over theta 0 1 over theta 1 now put the n's and theta 1 over theta 0 to the n case okay and for the other one 1 over theta 0 over 0 so we have the infinity case and in this part, I'm oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. And we have each xi value between theta 1 and theta 0. Okay, so now at this point, we have to consider um, the each xi value. Okay, so which statistic that we have to use, not xi, right? Okay, so let's uh, order the values from 0 to x1 here, xn here, and theta1, okay? So basically here, uh, theta1 and xn uh, depends on here, and this is a trivial, trivial solution. And here from uh, here we will have the cases that theta1 less than x1, and then blah, 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 it goes xn, between theta 0 and theta 1. Okay? And here, when we consider the two cases, basically, dependency of xn and theta uh, parts uh, can be related uh, on the tails. Okay, so this part and this part. So this means that basically the likelihood ratio because theta 1, theta 0 is ranging, depends on the value of x and here, as you can see from the ranges. So this means that our likelihood ratio L depends on sample random variables only through xn, the maximum value, and as you can see again our quantity uh, increases from the value which is between 0 and 1 to infinity here, uh, so we can say that it is an increase, non decreasing function, and it is a non decreasing function of xn for theta 0 greater than theta 1 case. Again, here our monotone likelihood ratio statistic is now the end order statistic. Okay? Okay, then our uniformly most powerful test will be reject h0 if xn, again we are looking at the direction of the test. What was it? It was um, theta greater than 3, so greater than or equal to C. Again, our job is finding the value of C here. And 
that uh, that we can consider uh, the defining the distribution of the n order statistic rate and define the uh, c value. Okay, so alpha probable to that and order statistic greater than or equal to c given that theta equals three. Okay, so uh, so we need to find the PDF. Uh, and then, uh, or CDF might, might be also okay, uh, then find the value of C. Okay, so uh, what is the CDF of X from 0 to X, 1 over theta, Tx, X over theta. Please write the range of X also, um, always, and Dx and will be b and power and theta so writing alpha as alpha equals one minus probable to that c given theta equals three Okay, then we have 1 minus the CDF formula, and here x and replaced by c, c to the n, r theta is now 3, 3 to the n, and it equals to alpha. Okay, then c to the n, 3 to the n, we have 1 minus alpha, then r c will be 3 to the n. So we found RC, then we can define our uniformly most powerful test of size alpha as reject A0 if R and order statistic. The maximum value from the sample is, is greater than, right, what was the rejection region? Yep, greater than or equal to 3. 1 minus alpha to the n. Okay, so this is our test. After that, we can find the power or the top of the problem to have type to error or whatever you want. Okay. Okay. Then um, we solve a question related to the case. Okay. So, for example, when um, when n is 10 and alpha equals 0.05, then our rejection region or uh, yeah, rejection region or our critical value will be 3 times 0.95 or 1, to 1 over 10, and it is 2, um, 1, 8, 4, 7. Is correct. Okay, so if our maximum value is greater than 2.118, uh, uh, then we will reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so we solve the question related to that. Okay, so we will see um, also other um, examples. Uh, Petek will send you some solved questions also. Okay. Um, Okay, other um, topic actually after this um, is the uh, uniformly most accurate confidence interval. Um, so here basically we are using the relationship between um, the relationship between confidence intervals and hypothesis testing. So after defining the rejection region of the uh, uniform most powerful test, we can find an acceptance region, right? Just use the reverse region. And from the acceptance region, we can define a confidence interval for theta. Okay? Uh, so this is known as, and the resulting confidence interval is known as uniform most accurate confidence interval. Okay, so let's see this topic. So uniformly most accurate, usually we define it as UMA, confidence intervals. Okay. Um, 
So we know the close relationship between hypothesis test and confidence intervals. So let's say we have a um, we have a confidence interval for theta, for theta. Yeah. So let's say we found that our theta is between these two. And let's say this is a 95% confidence interval for theta. So this is kind of an acceptance region uh, for theta, using theta. But basically we are using sample information and this A and B values are functions of sample random variables, right? And then, uh, so basically we can write this interval uh, for summation xi, for example, or in sample random value. So then uh, we can consider um, we, we can consider writing this uh, for these, and now we have function of theta values here and here. And this will give us basically the acceptance region uh, for the uh, hypothesis test. So there is a very close relationship between uh, tests and the um, confidence intervals. Basically, since we are using composite hypothesis, one-sided composite hypothesis, we will not have two-sided confidence intervals. So just one-sided upper or lower type of thing. And then we can define the, um, we can define, so this is function one, let's say function two, we can define the rejection region, basically, right? Uh, using this. <coughs> and the rejection region, uh, will be kind of the reverse of the confidence interval, right? So if uh, my theta zero value, if theta zero is in the confidence interval for theta uh, using one minus alpha um, confidence level, So this means that cannot reject A0, right? And then uh, basically, since we are using the same alpha, the size of the test should be the same. So if the size of the test is different, you cannot uh, do the same conclusion. Or if our hypothesis is one-sided, and if your confidence interval is two-sided, also you cannot do this. So the directions should be the same, and the level of the test should be the same. The confidence level, one minus alpha, just the reverse of the size of the test. So under that condition only, you can do this uh, comparison. Uh, so they are closely related. So there is a close relationship between tests and confidence intervals. If one tests the null hypothesis stating that theta equals theta zero versus in the alternative we can state that theta greater than or equal to um, there should be no equality, sorry. Just erase the equality. Theta zero at alpha significance level. level, then for a given sample, the set of theta zero for which h zero would not, h zero would not be rejected represents and now 100 1 minus alpha percent confidence region for theta, right? 
So then this means that a confidence region associated with a uniform the most powerful test is called a uniformly most accurate confidence interval. Okay. Um, so um, let's consider an ex exponential example that we covered. Exponential theta, we have a random sample and we were uh, testing the UMPT, UMPT of size alpha for the null hypothesis theta less than or equal to theta zero versus the alternative theta greater than theta zero is defined as reject eight zero if summation xi greater than or equal to theta zero chi square two and one minus alpha over two so this was our test right so this is the rejection region then to be able to find okay so find um, uniformly most accurate confidence region for theta okay so to be able to do that find the acceptance region okay so the first step is this one acceptance region so what is the acceptance region just reverse of this one right so summation xi now less than theta zero chi square 2 and 1 minus alpha over 2. Okay, then what we are doing, so we are trying to find an interval for theta. Okay, so now we have theta 0. Let's make this theta 0 alone here. So then multiply by 2, summation xi divided by chi squared, 2 and 1 minus alpha less than theta zero so now this is an interval for theta zero right we are finding to get an interval for theta then two times summation xi chi squared two and one minus alpha less than theta okay so now this will give us a hundred one minus alpha percent Uniformly most accurate confidence um, interval or confidence region for theta. Yeah, it's that easy. After defining a test, so we find the test, you know, for the most powerful test, after finding the value of C, write the whole test, and then find the acceptance region. After finding the acceptance region, write the region just for single theta zero value okay and then replace theta zero by theta so it's that easy okay guys um so let's stop here and we will continue uh, with other examples uh, actually i will start um, generalized likelihood ratio tests uh, but uh, for this week i think uh, that's enough um, the likelihood ratio test concept is very important and actually it's a very well known um, test in the statistical literature and also many um, Econometrics in econometrics, we are using it in time series. We are using it. Econometric economists also develop some tests related to solve some problems, economical problems. They use like the ratio test. So it is important to know the structure, how it works. We are using. We will use maximum likelihood estimators. Uh, they might not be the um, 
powerful, most powerful test, or uniform most powerful test, but at least we still try to generate new tests. So it will be very important. And the solution of the examples will be very long. So maybe uh, next week we will start like the ratio test, but then we will continue with some examples, especially when we have two sample cases. Uh, the solutions are very long. Uh, so we will consider this concept for two weeks. Then we will start another testing procedure, which is known as sequential probability ratio test. Uh, so when, um, when we cannot have large sample sizes like the random sample of size n, so maybe we can do some tests on a plane, an airplane. Or very uh, expensive. Uh, we, we have to do some experiments on very expensive uh, machine. Let's say so we cannot have sample of size hundred maybe for to be able to get the results. Maybe we we can only spare one or two of the machines to be able to get some results. So then we have to know the structure. I have to do it with sequential probability ratio test, and then we will start um, the Bayesian concept. And it will be the last concept that we will see. Okay. Uh, so, um, so we will meet again on Friday, but we might change the uh, time. Uh, this time, maybe in the morning times, we can uh, discuss these things that you cannot understand. Or uh, if you want me to solve some different questions, I can post it to you or just solve to you and then show this paper maybe. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, so keep healthy, stay at home, uh, be careful. Uh, I miss you guys. See you next time.